Welcome to this, the 12th lecture in this series on masonry construction. This lecture will look at the basics of cavity wall construction. And previously we looked at historic walls and we know that they were made from two leaves of stonework with a rubble core between them. And this rubble core acted as a reservoir storing water and preventing it from moving from the outside to the inside of the building. And part of the system was that buildings relied on air movement and the characteristics of the materials that were made of to take moisture away from the building. It relied on the wind and the sun to remove the stored moisture to release it back to the outside. And as we became more reliant on brick as a material, we started building solid brickwork walls. Flemish bond walls had headers which were visible on the outside of the wall that would connect the inside and outside leaves, tying them together. Taller buildings had walls of one and a half brick or two bricks thick. With a brick building, as there was no rubble core to absorb the moisture and the wall was comparatively thinner than older rubble walls, there was the possibility that windblown rain could saturate the wall and penetrate the full depth of the wall and damage interior finishes and structure. Very early cavity walls were developed in the 1890s. These walls had a full brick backing leaf, a small cavity, and then a half brick outer leaf. The cavity became a useful way for stopping moisture from reaching the interior of the building, as it could not jump the gap formed by the cavity. The cavity was also useful in providing insulation to the interior of the building. Heat moves much easier through solid brick than it does through a body of air, so houses with narrow cavities were slightly more efficient than those without them. The cavity also had an advantage of being better at restricting the passage of sound into and out of the building. Two solid leaves were capable of deadening sound far better than one. Over time, the cavity wall thickness was reduced to two half brick leaves, with a cavity of around 2 inches, so 50 millimetres, which produced a wall of about 250 millimetres overall. These cavity walls were lightweight by comparison to earlier solid walls, used less material, and that subsequently made them cheaper and easier to build. All modern cavity walls are a development of this type of wall. The structural performance of a cavity wall relies on both leaves working together as a single wall. Often, one of the leaves, usually the inner one, will be dedicated as the load-bearing leaf which carries the loads from the floor and the roof. However, both leaves work together to transfer tensile and compressive forces between each other, if they're tied together. So in order that the two leaves can work together, they're required to be joined in some manner. Spanning bricks over a cavity would negate the positive benefits of the cavity, so we can't just use a full brick going backwards. So some other method is required. In modern cavity walls, the cavity is bridged by wall ties, which join the two leaves together with the minimum surface area. Wall ties are predominantly made from stainless steel to prevent corrosion, though older properties might have used galvanized steel, and even older properties would have used cast iron, but both of those are prone to corrosion and failure. As one of the primary functions of the cavity is to arrest the passage of moisture and stop it reaching the inside of the building. It's important that the wall ties don't allow water to bridge the gap. All wall ties should have a drip which allows water to collect as a droplet in the middle of the tie and to drip down into the cavity below. It's also important that wall ties are kept clean. It's easy for mortar droppings to collect on wall ties and if they're not cleaned off, they can act as a bridge for moisture. Another function of the cavity is to help in the insulation of the building. A clear air layer is less conductive than a solid material, especially stainless steel, so it's important that the cross-section of the tie is kept to the minimum and that they're spaced according to the structural requirements of the wall. Putting too many wall ties in can result in small but significant cold bridges within the construction. As it's the job of the cavity to arrest moisture, 
and to stop it reaching the inside of the building, it's essential that there's a good supply of air moving through it. Cavities been, can be vented or ventilated. Vented cavities usually have small weep holes near their base, which allow moisture to escape and air to enter. Ventilated cavities have holes at both the top and the bottom to allow free movement of air within the cavity. But we'll cover that in more detail in future lectures. So in conclusion, cavity walls developed as a method of building a more efficient wall, which could deal with moisture without being overly thick. Cavity walls were developed in the late 19th century, and by the early 20th century they had become common, especially in areas of Britain which used brick as the primary building material. So aspects that you should take from this lecture are that a cavity wall is built from two leaves of masonry tied together, that metal wall ties connect each leaf and allow them to work together, that the cavity can stop moisture from reaching the inside of a building, that wall ties have a drip in the inside to drop water down into the cavity, and that ventilation of a cavity is important for its function. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and uh, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them.